Hi, my name is Dan Rielli. I'm the James B. Duke Professor of Psychology and Behavioral Economics at Duke University. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about paying it forward. So paying it forward is a very interesting process. Somebody, let's say, go to buy a cup of coffee and they buy themselves a cup of coffee and they prepay for the somebody behind them. Then the person behind them gets a free cup of coffee. But what we find in terms of evidence is that often this person doesn't stop things. That they, are. they say, oh, thank you very much. I'll pay for coffee for the person behind me. And then it continues, it continues, it continues, sometimes for hundreds of people. And the first uh, question you might uh, ask is, who benefits the most? Uh, the person who is uh, giving it or the person who is getting it? Or if people are doing both, what are they benefiting more from? The giving or the getting? And of course, they're both beneficial, but I think that the giving is actually more beneficial in the long term. You know, we get lots of gifts around. Uh, we uh, are used to getting gifts. It's kind of something that fits our selfishness. But giving a gift to somebody else is something actually quite, quite special that you get to think about it for a long time. So it stays in your memory. Think about it. If you got somebody paid you for a cup of coffee, how long would you keep on thinking about the fact that you got a cup of coffee, but if you're giving it to somebody else, you might keep on thinking about it for a long time. You might say to yourself, oh, look at me, I'm a wonderful, kind human being. I'm paying uh, for coffee for other people, and that would stay with you for a longer time. So I think that it's one of those interesting cases in which giving actually gives more pleasure than getting. And what is the logic behind this string more generally? Well, the logic is that when somebody gives us something, we feel indebted. This is the need for reciprocity. We feel we should do something back, and as a consequence, we often do that. Uh, this is something actually very general in terms of our need to reciprocate. It's not just about coffee, and it's not just about these strings of giving and getting. It's actually something really beautiful about human nature, that when somebody does a favor for us, or does something for us, we feel connected to them and we want to reciprocate. Uh, by the way, like many human uh, aspects, nothing is always just good. This reciprocity is also one of the reasons why conflicts of interest are so complex and why one of the best investments in the U.S. is in lobbying. Why is lobbying so financially beneficial? Because people are cheap. Because you can buy somebody a sandwich and a beer and all of a sudden they like you better and they start looking at life from your perspective. But we have this ability that the moment we buy something for somebody, they start liking us more, they start thinking about life from uh, our perspective. It creates friendship, but also can have some downside consequences. Um, another question you might ask is, when are we more likely to do it? When are we more likely to give gifts to other people, to pay it forward? where the economic times are good or economic times are hard. And of course, if the economic times are dire and we have no money, then of course we can't do it. But when the economic times are particularly good and everybody has money, then we're not really thinking that we're doing something good for anybody else. If I was in a group of lots of very wealthy people and I gave somebody a cup of coffee, I wouldn't think I'm actually contributing something particularly useful. But the time of some economic hardship, I can actually think that my gift means more for other people and therefore derive more pleasure from it. So, of course, in great times of economic dire, uh, nobody is going to give anything. In times of economic tremendous success, it has no value. In the middle, it's where we actually get the most value of this. And... Finally, uh, there's a question of uh, why is the interest in giving so high these days? What, what is happening that giving is uh, in the news so much? And it's not just Thanksgiving. It's been in the rise in the last few years. And I think it's because we have changed our understanding around giving. There's an old question, puzzle in economics about the fact that as people get happier, as people get wealthier, we don't necessarily get happier. Now, it's better to have some money than to have no money and uh, looking for a place to live or health insurance and so on is terrible. But above a certain level of income, money doesn't buy happiness to, for people at the level that we would expect it to buy. And this has been a puzzle in economics for a long time. And 
this puzzle has been solved in a few ways. One of them is that, as I think Bur Derek, the actress, said a long time ago, if you don't think that money can buy happiness, you just don't know where to go shopping. Um, and that's true. People often buy stuff rather than experiences, and buying experiences give people actually more happiness, and buying stuff gives them less happiness than they expect. But the second key to this is we also found out so in social science that one of the reasons that money buy, doesn't buy as much happiness as people think is because people spend too much on themselves and not on others. And once we realize it, and it's kind of a counterintuitive finding, we're getting more excited and getting to understand differently about how we should think about giving. So we're getting to the giving season, and I hope you will give. I'm sure you'll get lots of happiness from it, and happy holidays.